120 mil travel, SWAT storage, and not a brain damper in sight. Say hello to the eighth generation specialized Epic and Epic Evo. Now these two bikes have been totally redesigned for this year, and while they do share the same frame and suspension design, there are a number of key differences that result in a unique ride quality out on the trail. We've been riding these bikes for the past couple of months, and we decided to bring them to the Buxton Mountain Bike Park for some back-to-back -back testing. I brought along my pal Joe, who, as well as being a former World Cup cross-country racer, is a mountain bike skills instructor, and she also owns the current Epic Evo. Now in this video, we'll be going into detail about what's changed on the new bikes, how they compare to one another, and most importantly, how they ride on the trail. So join us as we review the new Specialized Epic and Epic Evo. So the Specialized Epic 8 features an all new carbon frame for this year. It ditches the brain shock entirely and it also sees an increase in travel to 120 millimeters front and rear. Now that sees it morph into more of an all round XC and marathon race bike and puts it alongside the latest Scott Spark and Orbea Oys. Each Epic is built around a RockShox Sid Fork and Sid Lux shock with a custom three position damper that links up to a twist lock remote. The one exception is the S-Works model we have here here, which debuts the new XC version of RockShox Flight Attendant. More on that in a bit. With the new frame, the Epic sees some updates to the geometry. The head angle slackens out to 66.4 degrees. The seat tube angle steepens to 76 degrees. The reach increases to 450 millimeters on the size medium we've got here. And we've got a 435 millimeter rear center length on all sizes. There is a two position flip chip inside the lower shock mount. Now that comes from the factory set up in high. If you flip that into low, that'll drop the BB height by five millimeters and slacken the angles by half a degree. Whereas the Epic is the all round XC race bike, the Epic Evo turns into more of a lightweight trail bike. Now it does feature the same full carbon frame and 120 mil of rear travel, but Specialized pumps things up with a longer 130 mil travel fork. Now that's complemented by a more aggressive build kit. We've got wider bars, a shorter stem, bigger brakes, and chunkier tires. It's also built around a custom-tuned Fox Float shock with a high-volume air can and a two-position damper. Geometry is pretty similar, but the Epic Evo comes set up with the flip chip in the low position, and combined with the longer travel fork, the head angle slackens out to 65.4 degrees, the seat tube angle sits at 75 degrees, the reach is a tad shorter at 445 millimeters, and the BB is a touch higher off the ground. For the first time ever, the new Epic and Epic Evo incorporate in-frame SWAT storage. This new generation hatch features a lower profile and an ergonomic lever mechanism. The snug fit is claimed to be watertight and rattle free, and the underside incorporates a holster for carrying your Dyna plug and CO2 cylinder. Along with the nifty SWAT tools and the ability to carry two bottles, you're pretty well covered for long distance trail riding and marathon racing. A big story with the new Specialized Epic is the arrival of RockShox Flight Attendant to the world of XC. Now it's worth stipulating that this will only come on the S-Works model, so I don't want to spend the whole video talking about it, but it is really cool. Now this XC version uses the same fork and shock modules as the existing flight attendant system. It uses a variety of sensors to read the terrain and automatically adjust the suspension between the open pedal and lock settings. Where things get interesting is with the new power meter integration, and this allows the system to read your power output and make better informed decisions based on how hard you're pedaling. In use, it is an absolute game changer, particularly with the new customization options via the SRAM Access app. Now we've got a load more info in a separate review on Flight Attendant over at flowmountainbike.com. If you're keen to know more about it, click the link in the video description below. There are six new models across the Specialized Epic and Epic Evo lineup, and prices will start at seven and a half thousand Australian dollars for the comp model. Now over here we have the Epic Evo Pro, and the price on this is a bit over 14 grand. It comes with Fox Factory Series suspension with a 34 grip two fork and that custom tuned float shock. There's a SRAM EXO transmission, code silver brakes, Roval control carbon rims laced to industry nine hubs with a special 
specialized Purgatory T9 on the front and a ground control T7 on the rear. Confirm weight for this Epic Evo Pro is 12.1 kilos. Now over here, we have the top of the range S-Works Epic. And the price on this is an astonishing 24,000 Australian dollars. Now, of course, it does come with RockShox flight attendant, which is a big contributor to the price tag. And it's also the only model to get the premium FACT 12M carbon frame. It also comes with an astonishingly high-end build kit. We've got SRAM XXSL transmission, level ultimate brakes, Roval Control SL wheels with a specialized Fast Track T7 on the front and a Renegade T5 on the rear. Confirm weight for this Epic S-Works test bike is 10.32 kilos. Now I did take the opportunity to strip this bike down to its bare frame and weigh some of the individual components. We've got all of those in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. So if you're keen to check it out, just click the link in the video description below. Well, that wraps up a couple of great days of riding at the Buxton Mountain Bike Park. Um, how'd you enjoy the trails, Joe? Good for a XC bike? Yeah, I loved it. Um, first time Buxton rider for me, so it was great to get over here and ride the trails for a couple of days on the on the two bikes that we have here. So, um, yeah, love the hard pack berms. Super confidence inspiring. Nice and flowy. Yeah, really sort of push into those with the um, the cross country style bikes, and yeah, super playful. Lots of little features to to move around on the bikes with, so yeah, awesome. heaps of fun. Yeah, well I had a great time too, but obviously we are here to talk about the new Specialized Epic and Epic Evo. For sure. So what is it that you liked about the Epic? With that Epic, I mean, I gotta say I'm loving this trend for 120 mil travel cross country bikes. And I think arguably this Epic is the best example that I've ridden. Suspension is smooth. It's got great traction and sensitivity front and rear, which I think is a combination of sorted kinematics. Specialized also uses sealed cartridge bearings at all the pivot points, and so there's less stiction there. But also the really dialed, like the RockShox SID fork and the SID Lux shock are fantastic. It's quite supportive too, which I think you would have felt with the rear suspension in particular. It's got a big bottom out bumper that cushions the last few millimeters of travel. And I think that makes it a really capable and fun bike to jump with um, for what is a lightweight cross country yeah, super race. Super stable bike. on the landings, so those bigger impacts for sure. So. You, don't, you don't get that kind of like hard bottom out. It's, um, yeah, it's quite confidence inspiring. I think the geometry plays into that a lot as well. The Epic has quite an aggressive riding position. It's fairly long and low at the front. But it doesn't feel, to me, it doesn't feel nervous like a lot of cross country bikes do, which I think comes down to the fact that it's got quite a slack head angle and you've got that big 35 mil chassis fork on the front of the bike. The geometry, I think, gets better in the low position. So that's how we've got the Epic set up at the moment right. uh, with the flip chip in the low position. So that, that slackens out the head angle to 65.9 degrees which is very slack for a cross country bike, mm -hmm. drops the BB by five mil. Now I measured the BB height off the floor at 323 millimeters, which is really low. <laughs> and I think uh, it, it does give a really nice in the bike feel. It's got really good stability at speed and you can just bury this bike into the corners. You know, it feels, it, it feels fantastic yep. through the turns. I also like that Specialized hasn't gone too stiff with this bike. So the carbon frame, I think has a bit of springiness to it. Um, the Roval wheels have got good vertical compliance and you've got nice supple tire casing. So mm -hmm. the result of that is a decent amount of um, vibration absorption. Um, so you're getting less feedback through yeah. the contact points and just really good traction. Yeah. I've also been impressed with the pedal response. So on the new Epic and Epic Evo, um, Specialized has increased the anti-squat. So they've lifted the main pivot um, and that makes it uh, quite responsive under power, even when the suspension is in the wide open mode. It is worth talking about the magic middle mode. So as we mentioned before, the fork and shock have a three position damper and they're custom tuned um, in partnership between Specialized and RockShox. The middle mode, it's called magic middle, that uh, features a custom digressive compression tune that adds a lot of low speed support basically to stabilize the suspension but it's designed to kind of break through that platform when you hit something hard enough it's actually a similar concept to the old brain damper oh. um, it's just a lot smoother and a lot quieter as well i think on the trail it works really well it improves pedal efficiency but it also lifts the mm. ride height of the bike so even with that really low bottom bracket i just pedal strikes for a non-issue for me 
None this weekend? Yeah, no, nothing that I've encountered. So even with that, that low BB. But then when you're charging through rougher sections of trail and you're sort of smashing into rocks and bumps, roots, um, the suspension's able to open up quickly. So it ends up feeling quite open on that sort of, uh, you know, rougher sections of trail. Yeah. Um, so I think that magic middle setting is ideal for racing scenarios. Right, so on the suspension, what did you think about flight attendant? Yeah, well, I, I said I didn't want to talk about this too much because it only comes on the S-Works model. Mm -hmm. um, so we've created a separate review um, on flight attendant that has kind of all the nit nitty gritty details for people that want to know about it. But in short, I, I freaking love it. I, I think this is the pinnacle of XE suspension right now. Um, I love how clean it is. Um, the fact that you don't have to adjust your grip to change suspension modes and the fact that you can just concentrate on the trail ahead and know that the suspension works it out for you. I think that's, that's a really good advantage for um, XC racing. I think with the power meter integration, the more you ride it, the better it gets. Um, the system kind of learns your power output over time and, and that allows it to make more intuitive decisions. So you just forget about it. Very rarely was it in a setting that I wasn't expecting or, or, or didn't want for that section of trail. On that note, I like how you can disable the fork lockout. So that's a new feature with the XC version of Flight Attendant. Mm -hmm. um, so that means the fork only switches between wide open and the magic middle mode. It never locks out on the trail, which I think is more appropriate for mm. off-road riding. I've got the override function on the axis controller. Uh, that's set to the lock lockout. So you basically hit that button and the suspension locks out front and rear instantaneously, which again is a really good thing for racing, say if you're sprinting to the finish line or going up a smooth climb. When you're in that override function, it stays locked out, doesn't move until you hit it again and it drops back in, into right. auto mode. Yeah, re really, really impressed. I can't wait to see it on more bikes. It's uh, about as good as it gets, I think. So what didn't you like about the Epic, Will? Uh, <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> Uh, the price, <laughs> 24 grand, that Ooh. is an insane amount of money for a mountain bike without a mid-drive motor, <laughs> um, honestly. Um, I mean, S-Works bikes have always been super expensive mm -hmm. and flight attendant and a power meter kind of only add to that. But if you can afford it, I mean, this is the best performing XC bike that I've ever tested. Um, honestly, it's it's flawless. It's super efficient. It's intuitive to ride. The handling is superb. It's smooth and capable on the descents. It's it's amazing. Like it's it's an amazing bike. It is pretty nice. But the good news is you don't have to spend twenty four grand on an Epic. Um, personally, I'd be looking at the Epic Expert. Now that bike costs less than half of this, so you could buy two Epic Experts and have a fair bit of cash left over. It, it does come with a slightly heavier. Fact 11M carbon frame, uh, but it still gets a Robile control carbon wheel set, and you've also got a wireless GX axis transmission. More importantly though, you're getting the same fork and shock dampers as this S-Works model. So you're getting the same custom tune, and that means the similar suspension performance kind of regardless of the price point, which is cool. So what about the Epic Evo? How did it compare? I think it's amazing how just a few components can kind of really alter the character of a bike. And the Epic Evo is a really good example of this. The riding position you would have noticed is it's more upright and comfortable. The bigger fork and shock, they kind of provide a noticeable improvement in sensitivity and control. It's really supple and active and it kind of eats up square edges surprisingly well for what is a pretty short travel bike. Mm. I've also been really impressed with the tire spec. I think you were too. Absolutely, instant um, confidence. That Purgatory yeah. T9 on the front, so that's got the same sticky rubber compound as specialized kind of heavy duty downhill gravity tires. Um, just in a faster rolling package that's well suited to mm. hard pack and rocky trails. It's got great damping, feels quiet on the trail, loads of cornering grip, and it means you can push this bike mm. pretty hard. The geometry is also a big part of this. It's pretty slack for a little bike. The Fox 34 gives it a nice sturdy feel up front and the Grip 2 damper, smooth and active, like even on high speed kind of impacts. And along with the big float shock, it just feels, it, it does feel plusher and calmer um, on rowdy trails compared to the, the race bike. It's also considerably more capable than the old Epic Evo. You've got 10 mil more travel at each end and the MCU bumper that comes in this new float shock 
Um, that does really well to cushion the end of the travel. It's got a progressive rebound tune, so it means when you hit those heavy, hard landings, you don't have this kind of sketchy, uncontrolled rebound. It's, it's quite yeah. calm and planted on, yeah. on, on bigger, bigger terrain. So all up, I think it's a, it's a really confidence inspiring bike that's pretty close to the regular Stump Jumper. It is more efficient than the Stump Jumper though, and the old Epic Evo. So as mentioned before, Specialized increased the anti-squat on both of these bikes. Um, so it's got a snappier feel mm. when you're really powering along on the pedals. Because the suspension's quite sensitive though, I think if you're just soft pedaling along the road or a fire road, there is a bit of bob that, yep. that, that happens. Yeah. The shock has a two position compression lever, so you've got the open setting and you can flick it around into the firm setting, which is, which is nearly a full lockout, it's pretty firm. Yep. Alternatively, there's a little black dial um, on the shock and uh, that affects the low speed compression damping in the open mode. Mm -hmm. So that has three settings. One is the softest and three is the firmest. Um, and if you run it in position two or three, you're gonna feel a lot more damping support. So that'll give a stronger pedaling platform, which is not unlike the magic middle mode on, on the race bike. Um, I think that's a good idea for riding flowy single track like we have here at Buxton Mountain Bike Park. And if you're using the Evo for racing, it would be worth experimenting with those firmer settings to get a little bit more snappiness under, under power. Personally, I have preferred it in the softest position. I just really like the traction and the comfort it provides, especially for riding on our rockier home trails. For sure. So what didn't you like about the Epic Evo, Will? Uh, well, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of clutching at straws to come up with downsides. It's um, maybe there are times where you feel a little bit overconfident, mm -hmm. um, given it's only a 120 mil travel bike. I, I liken it to a to an angry Jack Russell. You know, like it's not shy and overcommitting to to a fight with a bigger and scarier trail. But honestly, the, the only issues I had with this bike was actually the dropper post and the shock. Early on in testing, the shock was kind of exhibiting a really harsh, like metal on metal bottom out. Mm -hmm. um, and I went chasing my tail with volume spaces, but it turned out that that bottom out bumper had actually migrated to the other side of the support washer and it basically was rendering it ineffective with uh -huh. causing that metal on metal contact. Now I don't think it's super common, but apparently Fox is aware of the issue and is introducing a rolling change with a larger support washer to prevent it from happening. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I sent the shock off to Fox Australia, had it rebuilt with a new bumper and it's been totally sweet ever since. I did also have to send off the transfer dropper. That became really sluggish and it wouldn't return to full height, which was pretty annoying. Um, it's not the first time we've had this happen with a transfer dropper. Um, obviously, neither of these issues are great to experience on what is such a premium bike. Um, hopefully, we're just unlucky, but at least they are issues that can be resolved under warranty, which is, which is good. Mm -hmm. So, if you had to choose one, which one would it be? Oh, good question. Uh, look, I think if you're going to be racing cross country on a regular basis, the, the Epic is the one to go for. It's still a really fun and capable bike to ride. It's got smooth and supportive suspension, great geometry, just with the improved efficiency of that, that three position damper. I reckon the Expert model would be the one to go for. I reckon that offers the, the best value for money out of the range. If you're only doing the odd ra race here and there, um, you're more just riding for fun than the Evo is, it's for sure the more versatile bike out of the two. It's got a more capable build kit, smoother and more comfortable to ride. And if you did have a race coming up, then I reckon fitting a lighter and faster rolling set of tires would do a lot um, for injecting a bit more speed into the bike for racing. The Epic Evo Comp is probably what I would be going for if I was spending my own money. Mm -hmm. It's actually got exactly the same carbon frame as, as the Pro, mm. um, and it still comes with Performance Series Fox suspension, which is the most important part, really, of any mountain bike. Um, it just gets an alloy wheel set, alloy cockpit, um, mechanical GX drivetrain, um, code bronze brakes. It's a bit heavier, um, but it's all totally functional stuff. Yeah. If I had an unlimited budget, <laughs> I'd get the S-Works Epic. This bike is insanely yeah. good. It's, it's really special. I'm curious to see if Specialize is gonna introduce an S-Works version of the Evo, because mm. uh, I think that would be a pretty amazing yeah. bike as well. Absolutely. Um, no doubt very expensive too, but uh, yeah, if I had all the money in the world, that thing for sure.
You're not getting it back specialized. <laughs> Well, on that note, that wraps up our video on the new Specialized Epic and Epic Evo. Um, if you would like more information on these bikes and the flight attendant suspension system, we've got links in the video description below, which will take you through to the full reviews over at flowmountainbike.com. Otherwise, we've had a couple of great days of riding here. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions for us about the bikes, drop those into the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time. Doo-roo!